So, uh, good afternoon, everybody. So, uh, I'm uh, Marwan Abdella, and I'm here today to uh, talk a little bit about uh, probably neuroscience, just, you know, a little bit of it. I won't really go uh, that far. Uh, I'll just try to focus on the computer graphics and visualization aspects and to demonstrate how did we use Blender to um, uh, build some add-ons that have been used basically in uh, neuroscientific applications. Okay, so I'm Marwan Abdella, and I'm a biomedical engineer by training, graduated from Cairo University, and I got my PhD in neuroscience from EPFL uh, Blueprint Project. And yes, that's, that's me 10 years ago. Well, that's... Uh, <coughs> yeah, and that's me right now. So lost a little bit of hair, but gained some weight, so it's okay. Uh, I actually work now as a research engineer and system specialist at the Blueprint Project, visualization expert. And to know a bit more about the Blueprint Project, it's a project, Swiss project, that aims to digitally reconstruct 3D models of the brain and then integrate these models together uh, to perform a simulation of the, uh, the mouse brain. So. That's, that's an example of a model, of a three-dimensional model for the red brain. And what we want to do is actually to get deeper into it and understand every teeny, tiny, little aspect of it. So if we would like to, for example, visualize what we are doing, so this is a, a mouse brain simulation. That whole thing has been completely digitally reconstructed and simulated in a supercomputer. So every individual object in this slice is uh, a neuron. And when we perform the simulation, we expect to see some, uh, some results. So we have to make sure that these morphologies of the neurons, the shapes, are correct, because morphology impacts the, the function. So why didn't we just like uh, start with the human brain, some people might ask. Because basically, the human brain is very, very, very complicated. It has around 85, 86 billion uh, neurons. And it has more like um, 85 billion non-neuronal cells as well. And it has 650 kilometers of blood vessels. This is very complicated, yes. So why don't we just start off with something like, you know, has similar structure, but smaller in size. So we go to the mouse brain. It has around 80 million uh, neurons, a similar figure for the non-neuronal cells, uh, just like a small uh, uh, piece of uh, vasculature network around 300 meters. So what's happening in reality, that we image the, uh, the mouse brain using different op uh, microscopy techniques like optical microscopes or electron microscopes, and then we end up reconstructing models that way. This takes us to what's NGV, the Neuroglia Vasculature Ensemble. So we get this EM microscopy stack, and then we start to scan it, and then we segment the different objects until we end up building these models. It's very complicated, actually, in reality. Just do this. Could take up to several months. So we build these models in um, a supercomputer. If we just remove that mess because they're like different types of cells, we just need to focus here on neurons, astrocytes, and glia. And whatever that means, so I assume people might know what neuron is. The uh, blood vessels, basically, you have all the blood going through them. And then the astrocyte is sort of like the uh, the cell that's giving the energy from the blood vessel to the neuron. So that's about the biology. We, didn't, we don't need to know anything anymore. This is how it looks actually in reality. And this is how we are going to start it in the project. So we have a model here for the astrocyte. We synthesize them. We have a model for the neuron. And then we have a, a network of blood vessels. So we would like to visualize the different models as we are giving them from the lab, or the ones even that we digitally build them, using some tools. Trying to do that using different uh, visualization tools might not be okay that easy. So what we have built here, two add-ons based completely on Blender, that would allow the scientists to perform all these different tasks. Morphology visualization, morphology analysis, visual analytics, editing repair, even what's called somatic reconstruction, get to that later, and reconstructing some meshes for simulation and different kinds of other uh, tasks. 
So let's start off with neurons. So this is basically a 3D slice of a neuron as it's reconstructed by optical microscope. This is what we get from the lab. Okay, it seems nice, but it has, none, it has no sense. So we have to build the tools that would allow us to visualize it in every different detail. So we implemented in neuromorphovis different sets of visualization modes that we can actually visualize these neurons. And this is how we do it. So we have the soma here, it's called the, the cell body. And then we have just some samples or vertices representing the arborization of the, of the neuron. This is one visualization mode. If we connect the, arbors, oh, sorry, the samples together, we end up having segments. And if we connect the segments between two branches, we end up having sections. And then, as you can see here, sections might have some, uh, uh, some um, edges or like gaps between them. So we actually do something uh, called articulated sections. So we integrate spheres within the, uh, between the different branches. And then, finally, we connect all the pieces together to end up having the co what's called um, the arbor representation. So we can visualize the neuron completely as we would like to see it in 3D so people or like neuroscientists can understand what, what kind of value, what kind of information um, does it have, okay? In fact, this is just a simplified view. This is what we can get in the lab, you know? So neurons are characterized by very, very, very low occupancy and extremely huge extent. So if we would like to visualize an entire neuron that way, it's not easy. So we have added several utilities actually to change the uh, different parameters of the neuron so we can visualize and then we can analyze. So here, for example, we change the, uh, the radii of the neuron at different values. So if we would like to visualize everything, okay, we can see it. But if we'd like to focus on certain thing, we can load the, uh, the, the default view and then we can analyze the, way, uh, the neuron the way we want. Okay, also neurons are characterized, or they have different types of arbors called axons, apical dendrites, or basal dendrites. So every type of arbor here uh, or branch is color-coded by certain color. So if we would like, for example, to focus on one certain type of branch, neurons can, um, neuroscience can basically just tick or untick the, uh, the specific um, um, type of branch they would like to visualize, or they can even change the what we call the branching order. So we'd like to visualize the neuron up to certain branching order because this is important for us. This is not important. Even certain cases, axons are not really needed. We would like to focus on dendrites. So, okay, we have the option to do it that way. And also we have um, added uh, other utilities in order to clean sort of uh, the neuron. So this is what we can get in the lab. And you can see there are like s some bumpy artifacts in the neuron. So we can actually filter them, what's called the tapered mode. So you don't have in the middle, you don't have any sort of like bumpy artifacts. And moreover, we can synthetically add these tapered artifacts and make, uh, sorry, these art bumpy artifacts and make uh, some sort of zigzaggy structures. And someone might ask, okay, what kind of thing we use this, this uh, visualization mode for? It's like, no, it's very important. Because basically this is what you get in the lab, in vitro, okay? And this is what we simulate in the computer. So what we do with this is to build machine learning uh, networks in order to automatically segment these models from the optical microscopy stack. So we add some noise actually in the, the, the rendering so we can get into this view that has a similar you know, uh, structural uh, uh, characteristics so we can build our machine learning networks based on them. Okay, so this is just for visualization. What about the analysis? We have used the Blender user interface and integrated a little uh, uh, module in our uh, add-on. So once you actually load the neuron, you can analyze it completely and use the interface to display all the morphometric characteristics of the neuron. And moreover, you can actually export the results into you know, Matplotlib figures and in sync you can use the same color pattern and visualize the neuron the same way. So you have a complete structure being analyzed, and then you have one PDF or one file that contains all the results, like all in one go. So this is something that neuroscience would really appreciate. You want to see the structure, and meanwhile, ah, uh, you know, want to see the results, the analysis, so they can match or can visually match what they can see. Okay, the next thing is the soma reconstruction. As we said, soma is the cell body. By default, in most of the uh, neuroscientific applications that would visualize neurons that way, they use what they call like um, uh, an approximation 
symbolic approximation, either by sphere to represent the soma or by cylinders. But this is not reality because it's really hard to reconstruct three dimension uh, uh, profiles of the soma. So this is how a neuron is uh, loaded in, in, in fact. And simply, we can see the soma is only represented by a sphere. But this is not correct. So what we do, we just simply ignore the sphere, and we get the initial points of all the arborization or the trees. And then we use Blender to reconstruct a faithful representation or approximate representation, let's put it this way, for example, using metabolts. OK, it's nice. It's starting to get more realistic. However, if we use soft buggy uh, objects and uh, physics simulation, we end up having something like that, which is much more realistic than just having a sphere. And this is soft body physics simulation to reconstruct a real 3D profile, even without having any kind of data that represents the soma from the lab. So this is physics simulation. And we have actually generated multiple, um, um, the somata for, uh, like the cell bodies for multiple types of neurons, and they're all um, seem realistic. And we have published several papers actually uh, using these modules to demonstrate, you know, the results we'd like to, to show with that. Okay, we have morphologies, but we need meshes for several reasons. Meshes can basically be used for visual analytics, for vi visualizing simulations, or for simulations as well. So this is what we get from the lab. Okay, but this is what we need. So in order to reconstruct the meshes, we have actually used different types of mesh reconstruction techniques in Blender, so we can build the meshes that would perfectly fit our needs. This is the first method. It's like basically polyline meshing or spline meshing. So what we do is take all the arbors and then convert the dust lines into meshes, and voila, we have some mesh. And here, just the, the soma is generated using metabols. It's very efficient, has low tessellation, optimum for large-scale visualization, perfect, but meshes are not water tight. And this is quite understandable, of course, because here you can clearly see that the intersection between the different branches in the arbors are there, so it cannot be also used for transparency. Well, it can be used for visualizing huge slice that has thousands or hundreds of thousands of neurons, but not for um, like one modal visualization with transparency. We have then used union operators. It's pretty much easy to get all the arbors and then apply union operators between the different objects in the mesh, and we end up having something nice like this. So it's less efficient due to the application of the union operator, union modifier, and the branching geometry, okay, it's better than, uh, than nothing, but it's quite limited. And that's why the, we got pushed to move to the next technique, which is using the skinning modifiers. Skinning are perfect. They have optimum topology, and they can be even used for transparency because they make very nice branching geometry. However, branching might fail in certain complex topologies like this. So you end up having like open geometry. So it's not, it might not be good, but still, it's very, very nice, and it gives results 99%, okay, but in certain cases, they might fail. And then we have used metabol meshing as well. Okay, we can see that it's, it can give you one single manifold, but it might not be used for, uh, uh, for simulation because the resulting mesh might not be watertight. Until recently, voxelization-based meshing has been integrated in Blender, so we can manage to use the voxelization-based remeshing to generate uh, a watertight mesh that can be used for simulations. It has, high it has high tessellation, but it's still, okay, perfect for us. Okay, for synaptics, we would like to visualize the connections between one neuron and its uh, connecting neurons. So in order to use like spheres, echospheres, or UV spheres to represent this huge number of uh, connections, it's really tough. So what we have used, particle system or uh, point clouds, and it's just in one go, we can create this rendering or like this scene in just a few milliseconds. So this is also one advantage of using the, the particle system here. Okay, what about the astrocytes? Astrocytes are pretty much similar to neurons, except that they have something called end feed. And end feed basically is the, um, the object that wraps around the blood vessels to get the energy from the blood vessels to the, uh, to the neurons. We have integrated several visual analytics tools, so we can use flat shaders, for example, and then apply that, um, um, the different uh, visualization kernels so we can analyze them within Blender. So it's very easy then to get into different kinds of information that neuroscientists would like to see. And also we have 
implemented the same meshing techniques we have discussed before. Even the watertight fonts can be used to perform reaction diffusion simulation, and then we can visualize the simulations in Blender. And we can use the models to verify and validate the, the, um, the, val the, the validity, actually, of how the astrocytes are wrapped around the, the blood vessels. The last thing is the vasculature, which is basically a different add-on, because it, ne um, neurons are different from blood vessels. So blood vessels, actually, they have pretty much similar structure. However, they have uh, a, um, cyclic graphs. Unlike neurons, they have acyclic ones. And the main difference is like blood vessels, they might, you know, have, uh, they might be quite small, or they can go up to the, an entire mouse brain. So when you check here like, the, the statistics, you can see that we can go from just 600 samples to 2 million samples. So it's a different problem. So what we did is we packed everything in one single object, and then we visualized it entirely on, on, on one single go. So that actually makes it easier for us to um, make this operation sort of in real time. We also applied the same analysis for the blood vessels. However, some neuroscientists request, requested the feature like, OK, we need to apply the, figure out the, segment, uh, um, the uh, alignment of the segments in XYZ coordinates. So we have easily integrated just one kernel, and the kernel got automatically applied to be able to visualize the alignment in every direction based on uh, color coding or car color mapping the, 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 the segment according to its direction. We also implemented resampling filters. So when we reconstruct some vasculature, due to the skeletonization artifacts, we end up having this mess. So when we try to do the visual analysis, it's not that easy. So we need to clean the data set. So we have also implemented some resampling filter, and then we visualize the result immediately so we can clearly see the difference that having here a smooth surface, that even when we try to do the meshing, it's much easier. Because without having a clean um, sampling pattern, the, um, the meshes might be overlapping, and they end up having completeness. So we have actually, uh, we have also used uh, this morphovis to perform, uh, to visualize simulations. So in this diffusing color mapping, some scientists would like to visualize how the diameters uh, or the radii of the blood vessels are changing with respect to time in order to be able to validate their, their modeling algorithms. So actually, this is some sort of simulation that makes it easier than using a color map to perform this, uh, this action. So we can also visualize dynamic data sets. And the last thing, of course, meshing as well. We can generate uh, vasculature meshes using the same techniques we have used for the neurons. However, here, if we can see metabols, for example, might not be that good because they still have these bulby uh, structures. So we have used in the image below here um, skinning-based uh, modifiers, and it gives us like very, very nice results. In summary, just to ensure that we all got it, we have used different tools and options in Blender in order to build two add-ons for neuroscientists that I would say, as a visualization engineer, it's really hard to build a pipeline that can have modeling, that can have analysis, that can have rendering, because here we have, like, we use different kinds of shading. We use Workbench uh, Render, we use Eevee, we use Cycles. It's just like scientists have to choose what, what, what kind of uh, shader they'd like to have. And um, to put the entire pipeline in a very short time to end up with a product like that, without Blender, it would have been completely, completely hard. So with that, I'd like to thank Ron and the Blender Foundation for giving us such, such piece of art that we have used in our scientific pipeline in order to do some task that was hard, that would be hard without uh, Blender. And this is actually uh, a video demonstrating how do we use Blender here to do everything from just like visualizing morphologies, rendering them, getting like loading spines, visualizing simulations, creating 360s, creating progressive renders.
So yeah, that's it. And uh, finally, I'd like to thank my colleagues who helped me a lot, actually, for the development and for testing and ideas and tons of other things to end up with these two uh, products. So, thank you. So this is my email. So the two add-ons are uh, GPL, so they are available on GitHub. There are like two weeks that have detailed documentation, and here is my email. So feel free to contact me if you need to know more about the tools. Thank you very much.